Hey everyone, Tactics here, and in this video I'm going to be going over hard mode Tazavesh in a quick guide including the rewards, how to unlock it, and tips for defeating all 8 bosses. I just want to get right into it, so be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and let's start off with why bother doing Tazavesh hard mode at all, and that answer is pretty easy. First of all, the loot on the dungeon gets boosted up to 233 eye level, equivalent to normal Kel'Thuzad and Sylvanas, makes it a great source of loot early on in the patch for your mains and later on in the patch for your alts. On top of the gear, you also get a pretty nice mount for completing the entire dungeon on hard mode, the Tazavesh Gear Glider, and if mounts are your thing, this is certainly a cool one to get, especially with its unique summoning animation. Okay, so how do we actually unlock hard mode? First off, you'll need to unlock the dungeon itself, done through completing a short quest chain given by the Innkeeper in Ouroboros. Once that's done, you'll need to start off in the regular mythic version of the instance to sort of begin this pseudo attunement process that the dungeon has for the hard mode. You'll need to kill the first boss, then continue onwards, turning right once you actually get out into the city and finding a questionable traitor hiding over in a corner. Everyone in your party will want to talk to this guy and buy the fraudulent credentials from him. After you've all got these, you head off to the bar area, you do the little gauntlet, you bring the goods to the corresponding merchants until you finally receive the password to the bar as payment. Once you use this password to get inside, don't go to the boss area. Instead, go into the corner, and there's this guy there called Amanal. and if you have the fraudulent credentials equipped, you'll have some dialogue options for him, and you just kind of click through this until you get some passably forged credentials. Once you have these, equip that as well, and the same guy will give you a quest, Tazavesh, a hard bargain, and this is what you need to start the hard mode. From here, you just zone out of the instance. You can have an alt of one of you guys, just kind of reset the dungeon, so you walk into a fresh instance of it, and you can start the hard mode from there. Be sure when you do step in here, no one approaches the customs officers at the beginning of the dungeon uh, as it will just stop the hard mode from being started. Instead, make sure your neck is equipped, make sure you use the on use effect turn to a broker, and make sure you talk to Fetajid near the entrance of the dungeon. Once you're all done with that though, then you can all approach the customs officer and you'll sneak into the city without starting combat, activating hard mode for all bosses. Now. What are the actual changes here and how did we end up dealing with them? Let's just go boss by boss here, starting of course with the first boss's effects, the Sentinel. The main change here is that you now have to fight the mini boss alongside the main boss. And to make things a little bit more interesting, all the trash in this area is still active. So the space you have to fight the boss is significantly smaller than usual. We lusted here and killed the Portal Mancer miniboss ASAP to get rid of his abilities so you don't have to deal with like that, those Zymox portals and those interrupts. And we opted to tank the boss himself in one of the two corners that we had available to us so that the interrogation targets could just run across to the other corner that we had available for the fixate so that we had enough time to break them out before they got murdered by the boss. Aside from that, pretty straightforward, dodge the spinning blades on the ground. Don't hit the side of the boss protected by a shield, and if your weapon gets confiscated, you just gotta find it, usually located in one of the two nearby corners that I mentioned. From there, we made our way back to the bar, which had one of, if not the easiest fight in the dungeon here. You'll have the option to pick between one of the five instruments. Honestly, doesn't really matter which one you pick. We had the healer on the drum since they can do everything stationary, they don't need to be in range of anything, they can just on the drums and we had the tank on the guitar and the dps on the other instruments but again it, it doesn't really matter this is just the setup we use the hard mode version of the fight replaces the second wave of the encounter with the band members that you took over at the beginning of the encounter each fixating the player who's currently using their own instrument overall not very difficult they don't hit very hard just kind of kill them as they come in there's like one kick you need to grab, there's a circle you need to just run away from, there's a frontal cone, but honestly, you could probably just ignore all of these mechanics on this fight and still kill it. It's just not very difficult, um, but that is that one. Next up, we have the mailroom boss, and this fight was pretty buggy for us. The main mechanic change is that the bomb packages that spawn root you when you try and pick them up, so it forces you to kind of throw them in a chain to try and get them out of the active chute so that your party doesn't get blown up. As I mentioned though, very bugged for us. Uh, pickups of the bombs for unresponsive, just not consistent in general. Hopefully this gets fixed at some point, but our workaround was just straight up nuking the boss. Lust, all CDs, and just killing him before the first detonation. 
This does require pretty high overall group damage. I think we had a little bit over 28k group DPS here, uh, maybe 10 seconds to spare before the bomb detonations went off when we killed the boss. So until this gets bug fixed, it's likely to be a bit of a wall for some groups as it requires fairly high damage. If you're actually doing this fight properly though, assuming it's fixed, aside from the bombs, there's just purple circles you should be soaking, otherwise large pools form on the ground, reducing your space. And there's just a group soak in money order that targets a single player that you'll want to have everyone stand in. Then we move on to the Grand Menagerie, which is a bit of a chaotic fight with three different bosses that slowly join the fight over time, and the main hard mode change being that this happens quicker, so there's more time you spend dealing with multiple bosses. A lot of the mechanics are pretty standard here, dodge the bad stuff, run out of the circle, etc, but I did want to talk about the gluttony mechanic. This starts with the first boss and stays for the entire fight, jumping to a new player every so often and can actually be very helpful in later parts of the fight. The second boss has an ability called Venting Protocol, which shoots orbs around the room that will continue to bounce until absorbed, and he also does this on his death. If a player without gluttony soaks one of these orbs, they get a stacking 5% damage done reduction. However, if the player with gluttony absorbs them, they get a stacking 5% damage done increase. So this makes your gluttony debuffed player able to pick up a fairly large damage increase by soaking all of these orbs, which makes the DPS race that is this fight much easier to deal with. For the last boss of the trio, I would also just be careful of the Whirling Annihilation mechanic as it pulls extremely hard, so you want to make sure you create some good distance between yourself and the boss before this cast goes off. Moving upwards in the dungeon, we have Sozami, which is almost the same as her regular fight except now double technique is triple technique, requiring 3 kicks within 10 seconds to not wipe your party. This boss was really fun, I like this boss a lot, but it was a bit rough without having a few blinks or night fate players in your group as the reliability of getting kicks off in the later phases of this fight can be a bit sketchy without those abilities because of the walls the boss puts up. If you lack these abilities, you can of course use the teleporters if you can react quickly enough, though these are spinning around the room, so sometimes if you get unlucky, you actually just have no way to get through to the boss without a blink, which makes this a little bit rough. On top of this, sometimes, not always, the boss will port when kicked, other times she'll just stay in one spot, so it can be a tricky one, probably the hardest boss in here and definitely the one we had the most trouble with. Some things to note on the kick, 10 second cast bar is shared between her three casts, so you don't want to wait till the end of the cast bar to kick, you want to kick these as soon as possible because you only have 10 total seconds to kick her three times. This is another fight where we ended up brute forcing it a bit, killing the boss after only a single set of triple technique casts, which certainly makes it a lot easier. If you don't have the DPS to do that though, the boss is not bugged, so you can kill it the normal way, dealing with two or three sets of the casts. And like I said before, blink classes are going to make your life so much easier because they can just go straight over the wall and get your kicks off immediately, potentially moving the boss back to where you came from, making it much easier to get all the kicks. If you're like us though, who only had one Night Fate player in our entire group, that's our only blink, you may just be relying on extremely quick reaction time and good portal RNG to get this kill. Hillbrand is the next boss, and this is definitely a fight that gets pretty easy if you're in voice comms and can be probably pretty hard in pug groups. For hard mode changes, there's just some extra random damage and a new ad that spawns which you want to keep kicked as our Lightning Nova does decent damage to your whole group. For us, just make sure hard swapping to adds, whichever ad spawns, just hard swap, kill them so you never have to deal with them during the intermission phase, and just make sure no one is ever in front of the boss itself as he has a couple different cleaves. If you get the beams on you, just try and run them so they aren't obstructing any of the consoles, and run future beams close to the old ones or even on top if you can, just so you reduce the amount of space they take up. For the intermission, we assigned one player to each rune, and one player to call out the rune positioning at the front of the room, as only a single player can interact with a console to see the locations. We'll have a little pop-up with the correct room positioning and they can just call out where the other players need to go so that you can interrupt the sanitizing cycle and continue damaging the boss. And that's really it. So just kind of repeat this from here. Focus the ads and do the callouts as quickly as possible so you don't get murdered. We then have everyone's favorite pirate dragon, another fight with only one addition in slow field, similar to the Elisand encounter if you're familiar, basically just blue bubbles you want to avoid, and just another thing on the ground that you just want to stay away from. This is another fairly easy fight, tanks, so you just try and aim your breath at the adds to one shot them, otherwise you can just kind of cleave them down, melee, avoid the tail as the boss does have a tail swipe, and if you ever get hooked by the ship, 
Just make sure you run away for a few seconds so you don't get pulled into the water and that's it. Overall, pretty easy boss to deal with here. And that brings us to our final boss, Solea, which is another boss I really, really enjoyed. Might be my favorite boss in the whole dungeon, actually. There are a decent number of hard mode changes for this boss, so I'm just going to go through the whole fight and note them as we get to them. First, the collapsing star. It needs to be soaked four times to stop its explosion from going off. When you soak it, though, it puts a short dot on your whole party, and on hard mode, a long damage taken increase on the soaker. So you'll usually want to kind of stagger these soaks, and have different people soak each time to spread out the damage. The star also sucks players in a bit after each soak, so be careful not to get pulled in and soak early. We also found that as a tank, I could take a couple soaks safely and have that damage more focused onto me and less onto the squishier members. So I actually soaked the first two times and got two stacks of the debuff, and then we had just a DPS take each of the remaining two stacks. And of course, all these soaks were staggered a bit, so we never got multiple stacks of the dot. Aside from that, the first phase is pretty easy, just kill the adds that spawn, make sure they're interrupted, and at 40% the boss transitions to phase 2 after a bit of RP. There are 5 relics in this phase, which are important for a few different mechanics, the first of which is Hyperlight Jolt, which draws a line to each player that you'll need to shoot through one of the relics to remove the boss's damage immunity. All 5 of these will need to be hit in a single jolt on hard mode, otherwise the artifacts move, the damage increases, and you have to try again. To deal with this, we just had different people assigned to different areas of the room, and we just had everyone get the closest artifact to them. Also, be sure that your arrow actually goes through the entirety of the artifact, as sometimes if you're trying to stand inside one of the orbs, it doesn't actually register as it being hit. Just be safe here. We lusted in this phase after removing the boss's first immunity to try and get out of this phase as quickly as possible. Aside from that, she'll shatter the relics occasionally, shooting an orb that bounces between them, causing them to shoot out missiles that you need to dodge, and the relics themselves will also occasionally move around the room and do a 14-yard explosion, so just run out of this when this happens. Collapsing stars from phase 1 also continue to spawn in this phase, so just deal with them in the exact same way. From there, this phase just repeats until you kill the boss, unlock your mount, and, for Night Fae players, a Yak Soul Shape. Overall, I really enjoyed the hard mode of this dungeon. I'm excited for it to be added to Mythic Plus 9.2, and it's definitely going to be a fun dungeon to run on mains for the next few weeks and then on alts after that. That's it for this video, though. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or come stop by my Twitch channel at Tactics, and I'll do my best to answer. Aside from that, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the next video.